thankful for the opportunity to, to talk. Obviously, it's been a couple months since I've had this opportunity, and it's great to be able to talk to you guys and, and share our heart and start with, you know, we have a heart for our players. I feel for those players. I want every one of them to have a great experience, and I feel bad if they, them and themselves and their parents didn't feel like they had the experience they were hoping for when they came from Illinois. And obviously, we want that for everyone. I've coached for 18 years in college, and I think for 16 years, those players and, and families would all feel like, boy, Matt did a great job coaching my daughter. And hopefully, uh, they'll feel about that down the road as well. Uh, I think the report is kind of the first step in moving forward. Uh, obviously, we were very confident in the report. They did a great job. They're very thorough, 18,000 documents. They interviewed 33 people. They got our practice tapes. They got our emails, our texts. And so for, they were extremely thorough in, in their report. And uh, obviously, we're thankful uh, that the allegations were not supported in that support. Uh, we're excited about moving forward, uh, really important for our team uh, as we prepare for France, that we continue to get better as a team. Uh, hopefully you'll come tomorrow and you'll see the enthusiasm, the passion of our players, and they're excited to get better. We had Debbie Antonelli here on Monday night, and Debbie is a WNBA analyst that does uh, college basketball, really uh, well known in our profession, and she was just incredibly complimentary of our program, our players, their enthusiasm, how they talked on defense, all of those things. So we're excited about moving forward, and I uh, really thank Thankful. I will say this has given us an opportunity to reflect, uh, an opportunity. Anytime you're a coach, we look at everything in our program, every assistant coach, everything that we do, and how do we make it better, and how do we grow this program and make it what we want it to be. And this has been a great time to reflect and do that and, uh, and challenge ourselves to continue to move this program forward. What was your reaction to the report? Was it joy, relief, and do you feel this helps clear your name? Yeah, I think uh, uh, I was uh, thankful that the allegations were not supported. Uh, I feel like they're very thorough. Uh, I have to say 18,000 <laughs> documents is a lot of documents. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I was very confident going in that we'd see the right things, and we did. I know you said you're going to reflect and use this as a reflection time. What are you going to have to change in your coaching style, if anything? And do you feel like everything you do this year as far as coaching is going to be under a microscope? Yeah, I think one of the things, I want the program to be a reflection of me. I'm a positive, upbeat, optimistic person. It's how I coach. It's how I like to coach. And I want the, our program to be uh, a reflection of me. You know, the one thing for our staff, and one of the first things we, we did as soon as the season was done, and uh, we had a couple of players come in and, uh, and, and say, a 1 to 10, is 10 being the greatest, 1 being bad? Where were you at? And they rated a 9 or 10. And then, you know, obviously some of those players didn't feel that way. And so they have to be able to have an outlet to be able to talk and communicate. So I told Tiana and LaCale, they're incredible role models. Take them out for breakfast, take them out to dinner, you know, spend time with them and have they need to feel like they can share their heart. And, uh, you know, and that's really important for moving forward. Matt, why is Mike DeVille scholar? You know, it's kind of a mutual uh, parting of the ways in the end. Uh, Mike and I are friends. We're, we're continue to be friends. I think the world uh, of him and, and wish him the very best. What do you think about what the report had to say about him and his style and the way he interacted with the players? You know, obviously, when we came here, we, we have a standard of excellence that we're pursuing and want to want to get to. Uh, that we didn't feel like the program was there, and we're trying to build that to, to do that. And, uh, you know, he's, he's an old school guy and he's a really good basketball coach. Do you think the term harsh is fair? That came up a couple of times. Yeah, you know, one thing I'll say is the, the allegations in, in report were not supported. 18,000 documents and um, 33 people interviewed, and, and they found that they were not but supported. Harsh was the conclusion of the attorneys? Yeah, you know, what I would say is a very good basketball coach. Do you, you regret any actions in the last few years? You know, I regret that they didn't have a great experience, that, that these guys left here not feeling like, you know, they, they didn't have the experience they were hoping for with their parents. And uh, I, I wish that we could do that again, and they would leave here feeling feeling better about their experience. Is that something you saw coming on a couple of months ago, or did it kind of blindside you? Yeah, I, I don't think uh, necessarily saw a, a lot of it. Uh, and that's something why we need to do a better job of, of making our players feel comfortable in communicating w with our staff because there wasn't much negative feedback uh, throughout the three years here and, and throughout my 18 years of coaching. So that's something we need to make sure they feel comfortable in sharing how they're feeling. What's your program's reputation right now? And do you feel like you have to do anything to repair any damage? Yeah, the recruiting has gone really well. We're thankful we have several kids committed uh, in the younger class. Our freshman class is extremely talented. And so uh, yeah, those things are good. You know, if you talk to Debbie Antonelli after watching practice on Monday night, she would tell you, boy, they're heading in the right direction. Do you hope something like this kind of unites the players you have here and brings you closer together? Yeah, I think anytime you have some adversity, that, that, that's one of the things you hope to come out of it. And I, I think you're seeing that in our players, and you'll see that next year. Man, you said in the report that you thought Mike crossed the line at some point. Do you feel like you went anything too far? 
Yeah, I would say again that he, he's a really good basketball coach. We've had a great relationship. Uh, in, in four years of Green Bay, we won 114 games. You know, in here, being here in a short term, our GPA has gone from a 2.2 to a 3.2, and the players are graduated, and now they're playing professionally. And so we've done a lot of good things. You used the term old school to describe his style. Is there room for, for that kind of coach in your game going forward? There's certainly room for coaches to help their program pursue excellence, and that's what we've tried to do here. What, so, what about like pushing that. players? I mean, it, I think even some of the players who like him have, have said in the past that he, he pushes. You know, the one thing I said, the very best players want to be coached and they, they want to get better. And we want to recruit players that, that want to get better. It sounds like your ability to produce documentation and videos and so forth probably helped your case. Do you foresee moving forward, not just in your program, but in other programs, coaches even videotaping more things, meetings and so forth, so that if there is an issue, that you're able to say, well, let's let's look at the tape. Yeah, certainly we do that with our players. It's a great tool because sometimes we, we say it's a tape doesn't lie. And so sometimes a player will feel like, I remember my first year here, one of our best players, I, I told her after practice, you know, the 14 players today, you were number 14 in your work ethic. And she said, no, I, I was near the top. And I said, well, let's go watch the tape. So I went and watched the tape, and I was able to point out, here's an example where you didn't hustle, you didn't get on the floor, you didn't, didn't do that. And so I do think of documenting and uh, the videos uh, can be a healthy thing. Certainly it's great for players and for your staff and getting better. Coach, a lot of people came out in support after these allegations came out. How did that feel? Yeah, I'm really thankful for the, the people in our business. I've had coaches all over the country and uh, really thankful for this community as well to have a ton of people reach out to me uh, and my wife. It's been a little bit overwhelming, so we're thankful for that. About, I guess, how many people ended up reaching out to yeah, you? Yeah, hundreds. Hundreds of people. And Facebook and Twitter is one of the advantages of social media. Is, is players from that I've coached 18 years ago, coach, players at Bryan, coaches at, players at Green Bay, players at Tigerton, when I started as a high school coach, reached out and said, gosh, you've impacted my life in such a great way. I want to make sure you know that. How do you, uh, under these circumstances, kind of keep a team focused on, on this as opposed to everything else? We get to go to France. We're leaving for France on Monday. We get to practice, and uh, their attitudes have been awesome in the gym. You know, all spring, I did the workouts in the spring because I wanted it to be a reflection of me, and the workouts were great. Their response was great to the workouts, and uh, they're excited to go to France. What a great experience. We're really thankful for the school for allowing us to be able to do this, and it's going to be the experience of their life, something they'll remember the rest of their life. Does that make it, w w is it easier because you're getting to, to do that to go away a long ways away as opposed to just week after week in here? Yeah, I think that one of the advantages of going is the players get to play games. I think it's a lot easier for a player to be focused in practice knowing now I've got to perform under the lights in a, in a few days. And so uh, I think that's one of the hardest times of the year is October when you're a long way from games and in the summer when you're a long way from games. And now that we got games coming, uh, I think that does help their focus and their energy level. Matt, as you're out on the road the past couple months recruiting, is this something that you brought up when you talked to the players and coaches or is it something they brought to you? How did, how did you approach it? Yeah, it's been a little bit of a, of, of a mix. I have haven't brought it up unless the player yeah, we do have several kids committed that have obviously read the stuff and uh, they were great their parents were great and so I'm thankful for that um, certainly uh, we'll point through through the report if they have questions yeah I think it's certainly something we can improve you know and that's something looking back at it uh, even the, the, the right after the game Nebraska game uh, how do we make this more a reflection of me I'm upbeat positive uh, optimistic and uh, how do we help our players to be like that as well on the court how do you do that going forward yeah I think just being you know me and my voice and uh, in practice they all spring that's all they heard was my voice you know in the timeouts next year it'll just be my voice and I think that'll help them have the families or the, the uh, parents of the former players said anything to you now that yeah, we have not had any contact uh, at all, and obviously there's still a lawsuit out there, so there's probably not going to be a lot of communication. What is it that you think they want? You know, I can't really speculate to, to that. Uh, I know uh, coming here, they wanted their daughters to have a great experience, and, and they didn't feel like that, so that's something we're hopeful for the future. How would you characterize your relationship, your interaction with Mr. Brasecki prior to the, the letters and the allegations? There, were, there was a lot of what looked like friendly text. Yeah, I think it was, it was very positive, and there, there's certainly a lot of interaction. What do you think changed? Yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't. Um, I, 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 can't, I don't want to speculate. Uh, to that, but um, you know, we're excited about uh, the players we have and uh, getting to know a lot of the parents are going to France, and that'll be a great chance to uh, spend time with those parents. Matt, is the line changing at all? You said social media about what you can say or can do as a coach. Yeah, I think you just have to evaluate doing the right things and pursuing excellence the, the right way, and that's what we're going to be about. You get a report exonerating you more or less from the accusations of racism and, and those kinds of things. Why do you think those perceptions were there as well as the other things? 
you know, all I know is, is our heart is to grow players and make them excellent, and, uh, and that's what we've tried to be about for three years here, 18 years of coaching. That's been, you know, my heart smart together, pursue excellence. Uh, certainly they've done that in the community. They've done that in the classroom, and hopefully soon they will be doing a great le high level of that on the basketball court as well.